you know, going into this movie, I was a little skeptical, alright? I mean, when I first heard that the main villain was going to be the lizard, I was pretty confused. I mean, the lizard, really? He's not that popular of a villain. I mean, he's also pretty basic. So, you know, I had a lot of... You know, there's a lot of worry and nervousness, you know, or anxiety, kind of, going into this movie, because I didn't really want this movie to be terrible, because I really wanted this movie to succeed. But then the trailer came out, and I watched the trailer, and I really liked the trailer. It had some good action, looked like it had a good story, it was about Peter finding out what happened to his parents, what really hasn't been explained in really any Spider-Man movie, or even in this TV series. So, I thought that was really neat. Only I had known. So what did I think about the movie? Well, let's just say it was less than amazing. Now, I'm one of the very few who really enjoy the original Spider-Man movies, and even the third movie, which a lot of people hate. So, judging by that, I'm probably going to get a lot of rude and nasty comments on this video saying that I'm an idiot and don't know what I'm doing, but this is my personal opinion of The Amazing Spider-Man, so let's jump right in. So, first off, is it better than the original Spider-Man movie? No. Flat out no. Okay? The storytelling is bad, the climax is bad, the ending is bad, there are a dozen pointless scenes, more, even more pointless dialogue, bad action scenes, that are few and far between and very short. And half of the movie is just so boring. I mean, I feel like I'm watching 2001. I mean, do something. It was just... I could see that um, there was actual effort put into this. I mean, the people who made this did, in fact, try to make a decent movie. And I respect that. But they did not succeed. So, uh, let's start off with the cast. Uh, the Spider- Spider-Man, was he better than the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man? Slash Peter Parker. Well, I think they're about even. I could, they were both believable as Spider-Man and as Peter Parker. Although with this new person, as Peter Parker, I thought he could have had a little more emotion. Or a little more, um, get a little more involved in a lot of the things. Um, what about the villain? The villain was great. He was portrayed well. I especially liked when he was not the lizard, when he was actually, you know, Dr. Connor. I really liked that. He was great there. Um, what about the aunt and the uncle? Well, the uncle was fine. Uncle Ben was fine in this. But Aunt May was way too young. She had, like, raven hair. Okay? In the comics and... In the TV show, she's always had older gray hair. She, they were a lot old. The aunt and the uncle were a lot older, and because of that, they seemed a lot more wise and a lot more inspirational. And while the aunt does deliver a couple, you know, scenes where she tries to, you know, had some, you know, spiritual s intensity to the scene, she's just not old enough. So a really it's hard to take her seriously with what she's saying. Even with the way she's acting, I mean, she's kind of been portrayed uh, in the comics and even in the other movies as this old woman who, you know, is kind, kind of needs help, but is not afraid to take care of herself and uh, can take care of herself. And she, because, and because she's so old, that kind of adds a little bit of charm to her, and there's really not any of that here. And that's disappointing. Also, this is one of the biggest gripes that I have with this movie. J. Jonah Jameson is not in it. And neither is the Daily Bugle. They're not in it. No, there's one scene. One scene. Where there's like a paper. And it has the Daily Bugle written on it. And that's it. I mean, really? You're not even going to include the Daily Bugle, like, the primary reason that, you know, I don't know, Peter kind of supports himself and, you know, gets a lot of news tips, gets to learn about these villains. It's, in fact, 
and the original Lizard comic, which I have right here, the entire reason that he actually was able to fight the Lizard was because of the Daily Bugle. So, great job making this more like the comic. I'm not going, I'm not going to point out every single time that this movie is not like the comic because if I did that I would be here all day. They advertise this as this is going to be a lot more like the comic book. It is not. If anything, it's worse than the original Spider-Man. It does not follow the comic. Now, I've only read like the first 20 issues of The Amazing Spider-Man, so maybe there's some other stuff that I missed. And, you know, maybe there's some things that, you know, I forgot. But I've read every single comic from issue one of The Amazing Fantasy to Amazing Spider-Man issue 20. And there is almost zero to none similarity at all. Okay, so that's the end of that rant. I'm not even going to talk about that because that just... You know, it's almost false advertising, really. Uh, Oscorp. Let's talk about Oscorp. Oscorp, and this is the evil corporation. I use quotation marks in this because it's like every one of these movies has to have this evil corporation that wants to rule the world. I mean, it's not Umbrella Corp. I mean, come on, it's Oscorp. All right, and in the comic... And in the, you know, movies and TV shows, it's not this juggernaut to be dealt with. It's just a company, right? There's nothing about it that makes it super evil. In fact, all it was was just this simple company that was having a weapons contract with the military. So why did you have to make it this evil corporation? I mean, the way it's referenced and the way it's presented, like this big, black, really tall building... And they're like, we are on the forefront of human technology, and blah, 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 blah. Plus, the overuse of CGI special effects. Like, all these, like, holograms, and, like, these glass panels with, like, lights all over them was completely pointless and made it look stupid. As soon as, like, as, soon as they walked into the Oscorp Tower and had all that light stuff flashing right in your face, I was, oh my god. It was terrible, right, because it's pointless. There's like one scene where this guy walks up to this door and there's a lock and it's like this glass, this piece of glass and it's got a bunch of lights on it and he has to like swipe his finger like all over it in order to unlock the door and I'm like you could use a keypad for crying out loud or a thumb scanner would be a lot easier I guarantee you. So it was completely pointless and I understand they're trying to make this look more futuristic and make Oscorp look more advanced and all that but really... When it comes down to it, it does not need that. You know, it's already looked advanced enough, and it just made the movie feel like it was trying to be more futuristic, which was not a good idea for this movie. Um, uh, even Osborne is not in the movie. He's not in the movie at all, which I understand it's not about him, so I can forgive that, but still, if you've got Oscorp in it, shouldn't you have Osborne in it? And I know, it's like in the very end, he makes like this cameo, and he speaks like a couple, like two or three lines, but he doesn't even show his face. So what, is he like this super evil guy? He wasn't in the comics. In the comics, he was just a CEO who was trying to test, you know, some a performance enhancer, and it went out of hand. So, you know... They're making this... I don't like how they're presenting Oscorp, and I'm pretty sure there's going to be a sequel to this movie, which I'm fine with, uh, but, you know, the way they're presenting Oscorp as this evil corporation, doesn't, I don't like it. I, do, I don't like it. Stop it. Stop it. So, the story starts off with Peter around the age of six, and I guess through a course of events, his parents drop him off at his aunt and uncle's and then his parents leave and are never seen again. Okay. And then through another series of events, he goes to Oscorp Tower, meets up with Dr. Connor, is working on this, um, working on cross-species genetics, which, um, an example would be Dr. Connor, um, is missing his right arm. So his example is if you had the cells of, like, a lizard, you could regrow your arm because some lizards can regrow limbs at will. Like that, 
And so you can probably guess what happens. He tests the serum on himself and becomes the lizard. You know, and there's no spoilers because that's pretty obvious. I mean, come on. Um, and the whole thing about finding out what who his parents were and everything I thought was really cool. But about one-fourth of the way through the movie, that plot point is completely dropped. I mean, completely. So... What was the point of even having it there? I mean, it makes a little bit of an appearance at the end. Like, I mean, the very end, I mean, like, after the credits. But that's it. So, why was it even in there? Alright, I mean, the beginning, like, the half, like, the fourth of the beginning of the movie was about finding who his parents were. Drops that, becomes Spider-Man, fights the lizard, there's your movie. So, yeah, I mean, it was really disappointing. Uh, the movie started off good. Okay, the movie started off and had really good storytelling in the beginning, and I was really getting involved. But the part from where he got bit by the spider to where he actually becomes Spider-Man was terrible. Terrible. <coughs> I have never seen this so poorly executed. And the worst part was that there was effort. Okay, They were trying to make something unique, but it was done so poorly, especially the part where his... Grant or his uncle got shot. Okay, that was the fight between him and his uncle that he had that made him get angry and leave the house, which led to a series of events, which led to his uncle being shot. Was a completely pointless argument, and he got mad for no reason. I mean, I really, I, it was forced. That was that's the worst part. It was forced. Whenever something in your movie is forced. It should not be there. Okay? I mean, it just... Because he really wasn't doing anything wrong. I mean, he did, like, one thing that got his uncle upset. No, he did a couple things that got his uncle upset. Um, but his uncle was upset over a pretty stupid thing, first off. And his uncle was yelling at him. And it was a really big character change. Because his uncle, like, through the most of the movie, had been very calm and... He could, he could get a little annoyed, but he never really got shouting, and he got real upset. And it was com- it was a completely, you know, giant character change for him that I really didn't see why. Um, what else do we got? So, I'm trying to go through here without, um, without, you know, revealing any spoilers. Uh, the relationship between him and his girlfriend was... It started out good, but then it got really cheesy, and, you know, a lot of things started to not make sense. You know, um, like I said, I don't want to reveal anything, so there's this one There's this one problem, and it's pretty easy to catch if you look closely, and it's a, it made no sense, um, so I'm not even going to elaborate on that, but I just, there was a lot of, like I said before, there's a lot of pointless scenes and pointless dialogue. Um, the, his girlfriend is not Mary Jane from the, uh, TV shows and the other movies, it is Gwen Stacy this time, and, which is fine, I mean, I don't, I mean, you know, that's fine, and her dad, who is the police chief, is hunting Spider-Man, so he's kind of like the J.J. of this movie, only he's with the police, but that kind of whole plot line about he, how he's kind of got a wanted arrest for Spider-Man is dropped. In fact, it's not even there. You don't even have a chance to drop it. I mean, it's not there. There's just so much in this movie that was done poorly. That's the problem with the movie. It's not that it was done bad. It's that it was done poorly. And it, the effort, you can see the effort in places. Because there were spots that I did like the movie. But a lot of the other spots were just bad just downright bad. Like I said, the climax was garbage. The epilogue was trash. I mean, it's just sad because this movie had so much hype and I really wanted to like it. I really wanted to give this movie a high rating, but I just can't. It doesn't follow the comic book. You know, it doesn't display accurate representations of what people would do in those given situations. And the ending is really stupid, way too many pointless scenes, bad action, you know, it's just, I don't know what to say, it was just disappointing. 
disappointing. That's what it is. A disappointment. So my final score for The Amazing Spider-Man is, like I said, a disappointingly low 6 out of 10. It's above average. But only a tiny bit. Only slightly. I, You know, it, there's not that much to it. You know, I would have been happy if they would have, like, completely remade, like, the original ones and used the Green Goblin or used a more recognizable villain. That might have helped. But still, with the pointless scenes, the bad action scenes, and the action scenes are very short as well. Um, the dialogue is really bad sometimes. You know, it's just... I'm just really sad that it was like that. And, you know, it's just ridiculous that movies, especially superhero movies these days, are slipping into, like, this void. I mean, I feel like I'm watching, like, Steel. It's ridiculous. So, you know, bottom line, if you're a huge Spider-Man fan, you'll probably end up seeing this movie regardless of what I say. If you want another superhero movie, you will probably end up seeing this movie regardless of what I say. If you want a really good movie with great production values, great story, and great action, this movie is not for you. It has some good CG, and it has an okay story, but that's about it. So, you know, there's not that much else to it. I Like I said, I'm trying to defend this movie. I really am. But there's just so much bad in it that I can't really say that much more about it. I know people are going to be angry at me because a lot of people like this movie. I don't know why, but they, a lot of people do. But um, So a lot of people are probably not going to like this, but I'm just trying to voice my opinion. Consider this the opposite opinion to whoever gave it like a 9 out of 10. You know, just watch my video and, you know, see the bad in the movie because I um, I just really wanted to succeed and I'm very disappointed in it. So, you know, that's it. I, I'm not going to say any more about it because, you know, I'm starting to ramble. So, thank you for sticking around. It's been like 17 minutes. It's a very long video. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time, guys.